guys, so some more moving diaries. It is uh, Saturday morning, August 11th, and things are getting real now. <laughs> um, if you are watching this, you've seen the prior clip where my dad actually came and picked up our dog and all of his uh, stuff and is taking him north to their house. They're going to be living a couple hours away from where we are, and uh, this way he is up there, he's in a safe place, he's being well taken care of, and we don't have to worry about him on the day that we're actually moving our stuff, which is um, nice. And while Dad was here, we had the home inspections done on this house, um, and the nothing major that we need to fix, thank goodness. There was a few minor things Dad helped us fix already, and um, yeah, I think we're good to go. We're going to be signing the papers next week, and then hopefully we get our official get the keys day um, that day or soon after. So we'll find out. I'll let you know. I'll be back. Okay, so I just spent like three minutes talking to the computer and the thing wasn't on. <laughs> when I say I'm tired, I'm not really kidding. It's been a stressful couple of days. We are supposed to be headed to um, Portland again for a family wedding this time, which is just over the border in Washington State. And we planned on going in early tomorrow morning, like on a red eye. Um, I think our flight leaves here at 6.20 in the morning. And because we were going to be signing our end of the paperwork on the new house, and then there was a last minute paperwork snafu, and then that got canceled. But then I think we fixed it. So it's back on. I don't know. I'm really confused. I'm exhausted. A friend of mine, I found out last night is going through a really difficult time. So I'm worried about her. So I'm not sleeping. It's just one more thing. And I'm tired of living like I'm in a storage unit with all this back behind me. Like almost every room in my house looks like this, by the way. Um, and before anybody says anything, oops, sorry, about these things here in the corner over my shoulder, the baseball bat and the, what appears to be a, gun, a rifle, it is a BB gun. Don't freak out. Um, I, I kind of forgot it was in the garage. We've had it for a year, literally for a year. I don't even know how long, at least as long as we've owned the house. Um, Oops. <laughs> and I think my husband had it from long before then. Anyway, we never use it, but it's not something we want on the moving truck or that we're going to be getting rid of, at least for the moment. So it's in here. It's been a stressful couple of days that we're in that crunch time right now. That's the paperwork. It's just really stressful. And buying the new house I forgot how stressful this process was. I've never sold a house. So as far as I know, the selling process is going to be equally stressful. I have no idea. <sighs> I hope not. I really, really hope not. Because at least with that part, we won't have to qualify for uh, money or banks or have, you know, our accounts checked or it's going to be on the buyer, not on us. So I hope it's a little easier for us as sellers. Anyway, we have to be out of here by the 6th of September at the latest. We, we close on the new house on the 31st of August. We get the keys on the 4th of September right after the holiday weekend. And we will be leaving shortly thereafter. And then as soon as we're out of here, they will be paint, painting, doing some touch-up painting and putting in new carpets, cleaning and all of that stuff to get it ready for show. So cross your fingers, it sells quickly. Um, so yeah, it's, we're in that time. I'm just really stressed right now. I'm not sleeping again. And yeah. So anyway, I'll let you know how it goes on Friday. Hopefully it goes well, cross your fingers. And um, yeah, I'd like to get past this next hurdle. And that's all I'm thinking about, right? Is each hurdle as it comes and not in the long scope of things. I'm really trying not to dwell on that because that'll just make my anxiety go through the roof. And yeah, let's just not do that. All right. I'll be back. Hi guys. So it is, what day is it? Thursday, August 23rd. We are a week and a half away from the day that we get the keys on the new house. And holy cow, what a journey it's been. It's crunch time. It's the time when we need to really use every minute to get things organized and sorted and gathered. Um, get the rest of the things put into my office or my husband's across the hall that the movers are not taking. So when you're doing this, if you're considering this, if you haven't 
moved ever or you haven't moved in a long time. And when you did the last time you did it yourself, um, when you're hiring a company to do the bulk of the moving, it's very different. Um, this is the first time I've um, done that. Um, and my husband too, for that matter, when he moved to California from New York State, um, his parents did it and he was in high school. So he, you know, he doesn't have any idea either. Anyway, um, the moving company won't take any liquids. They can take the bulk of everything else, but larger, more fragile items are expensive to have them ship. Like artwork. Hello. <laughs> A lot of that. Um, um, and we had a glass top patio table. We just sold it because it was going to be like $400 just to get it crated um, to sh for shipment. So there's just some things that is easier to just move yourself. Um, there are some things you don't want them to move. So you don't want them to move personal paperwork, identification, or computers. We're not having them move the computers. Um, jewelry is coming with us. Um, things like that, things of value, things that of personal importance you don't really want on the moving truck. Um, so we're having to do some prep before they get here. They also um, need all of the electronics that they are shipping um, or are moving for us, um, like the TVs unplugged and wrapped or packed if we're, if we're doing that and they're not before they get here on the 4th. So we have a lot to do in the week and a half. Not to mention setting up all the utilities at the new house, canceling some here that can be canceled while this house goes on the market, um, <laughs> emptying out the P.O. box, um, deciding if we're going to get a new one, arranging for people to come clean the gutters and the roof at the new house, pa some painting needs to be done at the new house. It, there's just, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, it is very stressful. The end result will be very worth it, but do not expect you, um, I, I don't expect yourself to not be stressed out. Um, it has gotten to the point where, as I've discussed before, um, the, my anxiety issues have gotten so bad that I now have anti-anxiety medicine. Uh, I haven't taken it yet, but I do have it if I need it. I've also started having nightmares about things like not passing my driver's license test in Oregon and not being able to drive, um, having all the water pipes burst and it blowing the house down. I just, it's just, I'm having nightmares about things going wrong, everything you can possibly imagine going wrong, going wrong. And it's keeping me up at night. I'm not sleeping. Hello. I mean, I always have bags under my eyes because, you know, thanks, Dad and Grandpa. But <laughs> um, they're extra baggy. Um, so it's just, it's a really super stressful process. I would advise all of you out there who are thinking about doing this, especially an interstate move. If you're the creative type or you just have lots of collections of things, Start well ahead of time. When you're just thinking about it or you know you're going to do it someday, that someday is going to come a lot sooner than you think. And should something happen and you find the perfect town or the perfect property, the perfect opportunity to do it sooner than you thought, you want to be ready. Three years ago, my husband and I started purging. And we didn't do tons of rush, rushed purging. We literally took a room or closet at a time and when the kids were still living in San Jose they would come over and help us um, we would have they came over every Friday for dinner and um, if we did it on a sad the dinner on a Saturday then they would come over a little early we would tackle one or two cabinets in the garage or one or two cabinets in here or something and we would just purge I would take a carload every week to the point where the goodwill guy said oh do you have more stuff for me because he just could see me coming um, <sighs> So I would say all those things that you, when you look at them, you love them enough to pay someone to move them for you. Keep those. All those things that you look at it and think, well, I don't really want to pay somebody to move it, but I'm going to need it when I get to the new place. Keep those. Everything else, get rid of it. You don't really like it. You don't really care for it. You kept it because so-and-so gave it to you, but you don't really. Just get rid of it. It got lost in the move as far as you know. Just get rid of it. Um, art supplies are hard. I agree. I admit to that, but take a really good hard look at them. 
Just because you bought polymer clay stuff to try polymer clay doesn't mean you need to keep it, especially if you don't like polymer clay and or you haven't touched it in a year. Maybe it's time to get rid of it. Take a look, second look at all the markers and pens that you have. If you're like me and you do YouTube, you probably get sent a lot of stuff. The stuff that you love, keep. The stuff that you don't love, get rid of. I know that's way easier said than done. Believe me, I know from personal experience. You can always join my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, when you need help and support about an interstate move, um, cleaning and purging your room. I would love to see all of you having a space that is perfect for you, perfect for you to create in, and whatever that means for you. For me, that means a room that is cleaner and more organized and less chaotic. I just am not one of these people that can create in chaos. This behind me, I'm like almost not creating in here right now. In fact, I packed up the rest of the art stuff that was on this table because I just can't. When I do some sketching, it's either at the computer desk where I don't have to look at that behind me or it's out in the front room. I just can't. It's too, I can't do that. For some of you, this may not bother you and your creative process. For me, it's a nightmare. Um, so anyway, if you need help and support, I'm there for you, but this is just so stressful. I'll be bringing you along on the journey. I'll be filming some things on packing and loading days. Um, they'll be here to pack one day, load the next day, and in the midst of all that, we'll be getting a rental truck for everything that we're bringing and loading that. And my dad is, and mom are going to be um, checking in at the new house and getting the locks changed for me and internet set up and all of that. So thank mo thank you, mom and dad. And if you're doing this interstate and you have friends or family in the place that you're moving to, enlist their help. Because believe me, you're going to need it. Find a really good realtor to help you out. Somebody that can pre-screen properties for you. Um, we have a really good one in the Tualatin, Oregon area. Her contact information is in the description below, Sarah Ruffner, along with everyone else who's helped us along this journey, including um, United Van Lines and our California realtor, um, Dave Rudden, and a bunch of other people. So check out the description below. But um, you're going to need somebody who you trust to help you in the house hunt for the new house. Um, when you do get the new house, you're going to need somebody. If you're if you're buying the new house and packing up the old one at the same time, you're going to need somebody to help you with that process. So enlist somebody that you trust. I happen to have a little sister, Elizabeth, who her thing is sorting and organizing. She loves it. She loves moving people. This is her thing. She needs to start a business. And if she does, I'll let y'all know. But holy cow, she's actually flying out from Utah to help me. And um, I couldn't do this without her and a few of my other friends, if nothing else, to be mental support. So don't be afraid to lean on those that you trust and those that you love because you're going you're gonna to need their help. All right, that's it for the moment. I'm going to go back to watching Art Joy of Sharing Live. They're on this morning. If you don't know who they are, I will link their channel in the description below. They are a uh, mixed media art channel of some friends of mine. So love them. Anyway, I'll be right. Thursday morning, everybody. It is Thursday mor morning, August 30th. I only know that because I looked at the computer. Don't get all excited or anything. And I only know it's still morning because I looked at the clock and it's 11 o'clock. So there you have it. Um, at least that's what the oven says. Hopefully the clock is correct. I have no idea. Anyway, um, holy cow. So we are a week away from the day that we actually get in the trucks and drive to Oregon. A week from yesterday, the moving company comes to load up the majority of our belongings onto their truck and make the trek up to Oregon. Uh, a week from today, the following day, we um, uh, get in our, rent, our rental truck and um, at least my car, um, maybe my husband's car. We're not sure how many cars we're bringing on this first trip. And we load up everything the movers don't take um, and go north. So, yeah, exciting. Um, at this moment in time, tips I can give you all if you're thinking about doing this. And if you all have done this already, a big move like this, or even a small one, and you have tips, especially when dealing with a moving company, leave them in the comments below because I think we should share with each other. 
Um, one of the tips from uh, after talking to a friend of mine who is currently unpacking um, a cross country move um, from the East Coast to Texas. Um, she said, you know, when the moving company was packing the electronics and things, they took the power cords off and just shoved them in a, ra a random box. So as they're um, uh, unpacking things or furniture parts, when they took furniture pieces apart, they would take the parts and put them in a random box. And so as they're unpacking and she's trying to put things back together, she can't completely until she finds those po parts in the random box. So what I would say is as you take things apart and getting ready for the movers to move or pack to move. Take those cords from them, put them all in one designated box so that you know where that box is and have that box in your vehicle or on your rental truck and not their truck. I think that makes uh, more sense and is going to be easier on the back end. Um, so we're taking the sound system and entertainment system apart. They're going to pack the components but we're going to have all the cables. And um, Everything's insured. I would recommend if you have any items of value um, that you aren't taking with you that they're taking, uh, make sure you get the ex extra insurance and that way if things get broken um, or go um, get damaged or whatever, um, they uh, replace or repair. So if you have anything you're really worried about get going lost or, or getting broken, just don't even put it on the truck. Put it in your car. Um, don't do the uh, do the obvious. Don't put your jewelry, uh, personal information, paperwork, ID, that um, the extreme valuables. Don't put those on the moving truck. Take them with you. Put them in your vehicle. Um, we're not even letting them take the computers. They're going in our vehicle. Um, but yeah, so we're just running around the house, kind of trying to find all the random. You know, liquids, they don't take liquids. So we're putting all the liquids aside to put on our car. And um, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> Can't find anything right now. It's either packed or in a pile where I, it's not normally and I can't find it. So <sighs> anyway, that's the state of things at the moment. Everything's bare. Everything's in boxes <sighs> or prepped to go in a box. So yeah, that's a thing. All right, I'll be back. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Moving Diaries. I really just felt the need to document our journey through selling our house we've had for more than 20 years and finding our new place, our dream house, and getting that whole process done. And all of the stressful and happy and exciting things that happen in between. So um, the unexpected to the expected. Um, it's not an easy process. Those of you who have moved, some of you way more than me know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't move easily. This is only going to be my third time as an adult that I've moved. And this is a pretty major one. I've never as an adult lived outside of the state of California. So yeah, it's going to be fun. We do love the Portland area though. It's a little bit colder and damper than down here uh, in California, but we do love the atmosphere up there. Um, and so, yeah, <laughs> um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave it in the, um, comments below on the, this video. Um, if you go to the video description, any relevant links are going to be there. And if I forget, somebody remind me in the comments. Um, you'll also find my link tree link, which will give you a list of every single place you can find me on the internet, including Instagram, Twitter, Facebook groups, everything, Etsy shop, all of it. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Moving Diaries. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like notifications of when the next video uh, comes out, hit that little bell icon. And uh, that's it for right now. Go out and have a great day, everybody. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.